number 21. Let's already start to highlight information as we read the problem. I'm a Washin, also a great name, has a laundry bag that contains eight blue socks, six white socks. I don't want to neglect that. Obviously, you can't highlight in white and underline it in black. And four red socks. She reaches in her bag and draws out two socks, one at a time, without replacement. What is the probability that both are red? Nearest tenth of a percent. So we have two events, consecutive events occurring. In this problem, we're only looking at her drawing a red sock. So that's really the only thing we need to study the probability of. There's four red socks. Uh, to begin with, out of a total of 18 socks. So on the first draw, because we treat these like separate events, it says that what's the problem is that both are red, but we'll treat them like separate events and we'll multiply. On our first draw, there's a chance of drawing a red sock 4 out of 18. That reduces to 2 ninths. On her second draw, the important thing is without replacement. So she does not replace the sock. She doesn't put it back into the pile. What that means is this second probability, first of all, assuming she got a red sock the first time, so there's one less red sock in the pile. There's also one less total socks in the pile. So we now have a probability of drawing a red sock is a three out of a total number of socks of 17. And that definitely doesn't reduce. When we have consecutive events like this, we're going to be multiplying the probabilities. So the 2 ninths times 3 out of 17. And we're going to round, let's so say approximately 0 0.03 Nine two one five. Just wanted to make sure I was accurate. It says the nearest tenth of a percent. So of course percentages move to decimal place over twice. The nearest tenth of a percent. The nine stays because this two is less than five when we round. So it's three point nine percent. Uh, be real careful with that because D is extremely close to that. 21 is E. 22 is a heck of a problem. A locked combination consists of three non-zero digits. The first digit is a prime number, the second digit is a Fibonacci number, and the last digit is a triangular number. How many unique combinations fit this criteria? When we're dealing with choices, we will have to end up multiplying out basically how many choices there are for each slot in this combination. So it says the first digit is a prime number. This is where it's handy to know all the different types of numbers. Uh, we know all of these are non-zero digits. That means we're limited simply to the set 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Think of this as the universal set for this problem. Um, you know what? Let me color code this. It seems to be something I'm pulling off rather well. So the prime numbers amongst these, 1 is not prime, 2 is, 3 is, 4 is not, 5 is, 6 is not. 7's prime, 8's not prime, and 9 is not prime. The number of possibilities, so the first digit is a prime number, well, we have 1, 2, 3, 4 choices. So there's a 4 here. The second digit is a Fibonacci number. To understand what a Fibonacci number is, you have to be familiar with the Fibonacci sequence. Um, so let me explain that very quickly. Fibonacci sequence, I think it technically starts with zero. It depends on who you talk to. 
and then a 1. It definitely starts with two ones, and you define every term as the sum of the two previous terms. So, assuming this were 0, 1, uh, this term is 1 because 1 plus 0 is 1. Let's keep adding the terms. 1 plus 1 gives you 2. 2 plus 1 gives you 3. 3 plus 2 gives you 5. 5 plus 3 gives you 8. 8 plus 5 gives you 13. This is the Fibonacci sequence. I stopped there because 13 is now outside of this range of our universe. All the possible Fibonacci numbers in the set are 1, 2, 3, 5, and 8. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 different choices. And finally, the last digit is a triangular number. These are little-known numbers. So, uh, I am familiar with triangular numbers, so let me explain them really fast. Uh, basically, they're numbers that you could, if you stacked up uh, dots, they would form a triangle. Meaning the total number of dots would be the triangular number, and, of course, only certain numbers fit this criteria. 1 is a triangular number, 3 is a triangular number, 6 is a triangular number, 10 is a triangular number. There is also a formula for every triangular number. If you're given a natural number n, that's an n in the natural numbers, if you multiply n times n plus 1 over 2 for you know, all the natural numbers, and it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. If you plug that in here for n, you end up getting a triangular number. Every triangular number fits this formula for some value n, which is a whole number, a natural number. The triangular numbers in this set, the universe is 1, 3, and 6. There are three possibilities, three choices. The entire problem reduces to 4 times 5 times 3, which is 4 times 5 gives you 20, 20 times 3 gives you uh, 60.